Good evening, everyone. I'm Andy Muster along with Cal Ramsey here in the Superdome. And tonight, the Knicks are facing the New Orleans Jazz. And, of course, that spells Pete Maravich. He had the biggest single game of anybody against the Knicks this year, 39 points. Who's going to stop him, Cal? I don't know who's going to stop him, but I think Clyde might get the assignment. Maravich plays playing great basketball, particularly here at home. But Walt Frazier's come along for New York in recent ball games. He's playing very strong defense, and he's scoring well. That should be the matchup to watch tonight. Frazier against Pete Maravich. And E.C. Coleman is back for the Jazz, and he'll go against Bob McAdoo. And all of a sudden, New Orleans has a new star, too, a fellow named Paul Griffin, who grabbed 25 rebounds against Milwaukee here on Wednesday night, and that's tied a club record. He's quite a rookie. He is. He's been playing real fine ball, playing ahead of B. Hagen and Aaron James. He's done a real good job, particularly on the boards, and they need that. Well, these two teams are getting ready for the opening tip, so in just a moment, the game between the Knicks and the Jazz will be underway. The Knicks with a heartbreaker of a loss in Atlanta last night. That really was a tough one. They forced the game into overtime, but in the final analysis, it was really a fellow named Truck Robinson who won that game for Atlanta at both ends of the floor. He certainly did. He did an outstanding job on offense. He made the big play on defense when he switched over to help out and block Bob McAdoo's shot with about 14, 13 seconds to go in the first overtime. Lonnie Shelton uh, was active in the game last night, as was Tom McMillan. They'll both be out there in reserve roles tonight. Meeting of the captains at midcourt is concluding, and we'll have the introduction of players in just a moment. This, like most clubs in the NBA, the New Orleans Jazz proving to be a very difficult customer at home. They have won seven consecutive home games. Their last loss on this floor came on December 19th against Detroit. Now, uh, it is true that the Jazz did not have a home game for almost a month ever since the time the Knicks played them here on uh, February, uh, I checked that, going back to January 23rd. The Jazz did not play again here until Wednesday of this past week, with the exception of one home game. So they've been on the road, and it's been tough for them, and they have, uh, New Orleans has only a 5-25 and 25 record away from home, but here at the Superdome, this club has won 20 and lost only 8. And that puts their record a half game better than the Knicks record at Madison Square Garden, which is 20 and 9. Well, like most clubs around the league, they are playing very well at home. And the key, of course, is the play of Fiscal Pete Merritt, but he's been just outstanding here at New Orleans. He's played fantastic ball down here. And especially so against the Knicks. He leads the NBA with an average of 29.8, but against the Knicks, he has scored 39, 38, and 28 points. An over-the-shoulder look at Elgin Baylor, who took over the New Orleans Jazz at midseason. Baylor's record is 11-21 and 21 since taking over this club. And Bill Bertka serves as his assistant coach. And now we're about ready for the introduction of players. Pete Maravich, of course, extremely important to the New Orleans Jazz. And uh, he has scored 50 or more points twice this year. The Jazz won both games, of course. Okay, let's follow along as the Knicks are introduced. And uh, here is Tom McMillan coming up. And here is Jimmy McMillan. The center will be Bob McAdoo. Knicks making a change in their starting lineup tonight. Well, the Knicks were out rebounded badly in that last ball game against Atlanta, so probably Tommy coming in to get uh, McAdoo some help on the board. Errol Monroe and Walt Frazier form the back line, so it's McMillan, McMillan, McAdoo, Frazier, and Monroe for the Knicks tonight here in New Orleans. Coached, of course, by Red Holtzman. The Knicks start Bradley and McMillan together. They give away something on the rebounding. Starting for New Orleans, number 15, Bud Stallworth, a 6'5 forward, averaging just six points a game. He had a fine game against New York recently in the Garden. Here's the rookie, number 30, Paul Griffin, averaging five points a game. He picked up 25 rebounds Wednesday night. The center will be Otto Moore, 6'11 from Pan American. He wears number 34. Here's Jim McElroy, number 33, 6'3 at guard. And, of course, the pistol. He wears number 7 this year, Maravich, the captain of the club, and averaging 29.8 points a ball game. A reminder that tomorrow night on WOR-TV, Channel 9, at 8.30, you'll be able to see the Rangers against the Chicago Blackhawks. Jim Gordon and Bill Chadwick will be on hand to send you that. But number 27 is Dick Pavetta. Number 6 is Don Murphy. They will work the game here tonight. Pavetta and Murphy worked an earlier game this season between the Knicks and the Jazz. Well, two key matchups. Once again, Pistol Pete against Walt Frazier. I'm sure Clyde will get the assignment of picking him up. <laughs> Earl just said that's nice. <laughs> and uh, E.C. Coleman goes defensively against Bob McAdoo. And, of course, E.C. is one of the finer defensive forwards in basketball, and McAdoo, one of the great offensive ball players in the game. So that should be a good matchup when they do hook up. 
Bob McAdoo scored 36 points the last time the Knicks played here, but the Knicks lost that game, 111 to 102 on January 23rd. Then Mack came back with 27 points on Tuesday night at the Garden. There's the pistol. He has really had some outstanding games against the Knicks. One time last year, the pistol pumped in 45 in a double overtime game last year. Otto Moore and Bob McAdoo to jump it up. Don Murphy to put the ball in the air, and we are underway as Frazier wins the tip. So the next play, and Frazier goes in underneath Maravich, pass it back between the legs of McAdoo, and picked up by McElroy and up to Maravich. Pistol down to McElroy, drives the baseline, a reach around is hung short. Tom McMillan gets the rebound. And Cal, you said he was in there to give the Knicks some extra power on the board. Yeah, Tommy's a very good offensive rebounder. Here's Tommy Mack with the ball, giving it back to Monroe. Pearl starts down the middle, feeds to the baseline. A Tom McMillan jump shot is good, and the Knicks break on top two to nothing. You know that Tommy's a real good shooter. Once he gets himself set out there, he got a good pass to Monroe that time and a real good shooting position. James McElroy in and out of the starting lineup for New Orleans this year, but back in since the injury to Freddie Boyd, and he's going to have surgery on a right knee in just a couple of days. That shot would not fall for Moore. And here come the Knicks. Frazier on the dribble against McElroy, a fine defensive guard. McAdoo pitches back to Monroe and gets it back to Big Bob. Here's his shot over Otto Moore, and he is hit. Well, and this is a lot of switching on defense in that game against Atlanta, and I'm sure it's that again this evening because they set a lot of picks out there for Pete Maravich. McElroy fakes the stutter move. Here is a pass off from to the baseline. That is good by the Pistol as he gets his first field goal and a foul on Tom McMillan. Well, that time, Pistol moving without the basketball. He comes along the baseline. Clive gets caught behind the screen. You'll watch here. McMillan switches over to help out. McAdoo switches over to help out. And the foul is called. I didn't see who hit him, but they called the foul. And the free throw was good. So that's a three-point play for Maravich. And the next lead is cut to one at four to three. Frazier tied up at the baseline, no shooting room on Pistol Pete, bails it back to Monroe. He catches Tom McMillan on the move, he goes to McAdoo. Bob at the baseline, feeds into the middle, that was a bad pass. Intercepted by New Orleans, Griffin on a pass to Maravich, Monroe picks him up, the pistol fires. A little bit long, over the top, that's going to be Stallworth on the foul. Stallworth coming over the top on the offensive board. But Stallworth played a surprisingly good game against the Knicks in the Garden. He scored 21 points, which at that time was a season's high. And Stallworth came back to get 26 against Milwaukee the next night. He had a good shooting first quarter against the Knicks. A turnaround by Frazier. It is no good. Rebound on the move by Stallworth. Out to McElroy, who runs the ball club. McElroy, a stutter move. Bail it back to Griffin. Here's Griffin's just shot. Good by the rookie, Paul Griffin. A fifth-round draft choice from Western Michigan. And that puts the Jazz up for the first time. It's five to four. Traveling on Monroe. Red Holtzman arguing on that play, as you can clearly see. And I thought there's going to be a foul call on that play instead of a traveling violation. Three early turnovers on the Knicks. All of a sudden, in the last couple of games, the Knicks have been plagued again by turnovers, and now the Jazz give it up. Turnover number one on New Orleans. This building seats 21,395 under a reserved seating basis, but they've had several crowds larger than that. Here's McAdoo firing it up. It is no good. McElroy for the rebound, and the Knicks are not getting any second chances. But Rowe steals the ball. The Pearl picks the pocket. Now he has to wait for his teammates to come back. They've gone back on defense. Here's Frazier's shot. It is no good. And Otto Moore gets the board. Well, the Knicks shooting cold right now. They're getting very good shots, but they're not falling for them. Clyde almost gets a steal at midcourt. Here's a Maravich bomb, and it's good. Pistol beat. And he's got five points already, and New Orleans now by three at seven to four. Seven straight points for New Orleans, and a foul on Bob McAdoo as the Knicks give it up. Uh, Mc foul. McAdoo called for moving when he set a pick along the baseline. That's two personal fouls on him already. McElroy studies the drive and moves on it. His reach around is good. Nine straight points have been scored by New Orleans. It's a 9-4 to four New Orleans lead, and Red Olsen will take a timeout. Scored the first four points in the ballgame. 
The Jazz comes roaring back with nine, so it's nine to four. The Knicks have had good shots on offense, but they haven't fallen for them, and they're not getting any offensive rebounds after they missed those shots. Hey, speaking of swings, when these two teams met at the Garden on Tuesday night, there was a 38-point swing at that game. Well, that was really remarkable. The uh, Knicks were down by a dozen, came back to lead by 26, and they won it by 17. Moving into the baseline is Frazier. He's got a switch, and he's on Griffin. Pistol picks him up as he moves to the middle. Back off to Tom McMillan for the jumper with two seconds on the timer. They beat the clock. Tommy just beat the buzzer on that shot. Second basket for Tom McMillan, who got a start tonight. And Jazz leads it 9-6. to six. And Tommy's matched up against the rookie. Griffin has done a good job rebounding. That's a charge on Pistol Pete. First foul on Maravich, and we'll charge the Jazz with a turnover on that play. So the Knicks with four turnovers and the Jazz with three. Now the Knicks after tonight come back and play three consecutive home games. The Pacers have lost two straight as they come in. And on Tuesday night it'll be San Antonio and Tommy Mack comes back to hit another long one. Tommy's looking to make a pass in that play, but McMillan was picked up by a defender, so Tommy went up with the shot. He was wide open and he connected. That's nine to eight favor the Jazz by one. A week from Saturday, the Knicks will be at the Garden to play the Philadelphia 76ers. Runaway leaders in the Atlantic Division right now. But Stallworth shot would not fall, and the Knicks have the rebound. Monroe advancing along the right sideline against McElroy, reaching for the ball. Here's Tom McMillan, who's hit two straight. Monroe moving to the middle, gets in the lane, goes with his two-handed scoop, no good. Rebound, Stallworth knocked away, stolen by Monroe. Monroe gets his second steal. He was lucky on that one. Here's McAdoo's shot, no good. And the rebound got away from Moore, but the Jazz has it anyway. 7-15 remaining in the quarter. Took it right to the hoop. Oh, he made some move that time. He faked to his left and came back to his right and made a great move going inside for the layup. You watch him now coming back to his right and going in for the layup. Good play by Jim McElroy. Right now we've got nine of 11 points out of the Jazz backcourt. A double pump by Monroe and he hits the Pearl with his first basket of the game. Earl averaging 19.7 per ball game. Jazz by one, 11 to 10. So they've been getting the scoring from the guards as you would expect with this team. Here's Stallworth moving in for a jump shot. It is short of the mark. Frazier for the rebound. Jimmy McMillan had gotten out quickly. Let's see if Clyde goes to him. Here's a Frazier jump shot. It is off the back iron. No good. Maravich rebound. The pistol, who is about set to negotiate a new contract with New Orleans, hits and scores. Seven points for Pistol. He's in pretty good negotiating position, too, leading the league in scoring right now. Well, that's right, and of course the injury to Gail Goodrich, which has disabled him for the year, and at Gail's age, they don't know whether he's going to be able to come back or not. Tommy Mack short. Bob McAdoo around and no good. Tom McMillan misses a follow and Stallworth rebound. Knicks with three shots that almost fell, and in the final analysis, none did. New Orleans leads at 13 to 10. We're in the opening quarter. After the game, the Knicks have a charter flight back to New York. Here's a Maravich shot of the left. It's good. Well, the Knicks are having a tough time defending against Pistol Pete right now. Clyde is guarding him, but he's going to have to get help from the big men when he makes his move down the lane. We have a whistle before that move by Tom McMillan. A foul before the shot on Stallworth. That's his second personal foul. By the way, speaking of travel, we were talking last night about the Knicks having to rush to catch a plane. Well, just in case you gave that any further thought, needless to say, they missed that airplane. And they didn't get into the hotel in New Orleans till about 3 this morning after taking a later flight. Back and due to the hoop, and he hangs it short. Otto Moore rebounds it out to Maravich. Pistol moving up the center, going with a jump shot. No, but a foul Monroe, and the Pearl does not believe it. Well, the Jazz running with every opportunity now. They're controlling their defensive boards. The Knicks aren't getting any offensive rebounds, and the Jazz coming up running every time, and Pistol likes to handle the ball in the fast break. Maravich, an 83% free throw shooter, going to the line for the second time. He is one for one. That's the first foul on Monroe. Red Holzman is screaming at Don Murphy. He says that Maravich jumped right into the defending ball player, Earl Monroe. But the call didn't go that way. A 17-10 New Orleans lead, a foul on James McElroy. This is the largest lead for New Orleans right now. First foul on McElroy. The Jazz with three team fouls. The Knicks have two team fouls. Here's Frazier moving on Maravich and can't get any room. Goes to Monroe. The Pearl knocked away by Griffin. 
Griffin helping out. He was actually guarding a forward, but he knocked that ball away. Here's Griffin, the rookie, moves in, dishes off, McElroy. Oh, the crowd wanted that shot because the Jazz was playing good basketball. They moved the ball very well in that sequence. Fred Holzman is readying Butch Beard to come into the game. Here's a New Orleans foul coming in, and that's Walt Frazier at his best. He actually forced that foul. And Pistol was pretty upset with that call because he said that Walt Frazier moved into him. Clyde made a good move and fake to get him up in the air, and then he got the contact, threw the ball up, he'll shoot too. Well, Butch was coming in for Frazier, so he'll have to wait. As Clyde goes to the foul line, Clyde hitting at 73%. Last night at the line, Clyde was one for six. He played a great game, but he really had trouble on the charity shot. And that's rather unusual. Here is one of the finest offensive forwards in basketball. Number 12, E.C. Coleman, after a two-game layoff. Coleman was out with a bruised right knee, but he's back tonight. Two for two is Frazier. And the Knicks cut their deficit to five. It is 17 to 10. Pistol up on five. Cross to Coleman. Here's a jump shot by Stallworth. In and out. Rebound, McAdoo with a chance to cut further into this deficit. At the outset of the game, the Knicks scored the first four points, then fell behind 9-4. to four. Frazier's shot is no good. Stallworth clears it out. You know, Clyde shot very well last night, but he's having a very difficult time here in this first quarter with his shooting. Frazier was 12 out of 17 last night. Stallworth moves in great position, but it doesn't count. A charging foul will go. Stallworth gets called on the foul. He's got three fouls already. Now Butch Beard has a chance to come in. Frazier to the bench. And Butch will go defensively now against Pete Maravich. You notice the Jazz are using E.C. Coleman defensively against Tom McMillan, keeping Otto Moore on uh, Big Bob McAdoo. Just over four minutes remaining in the opening quarter from the Superdome in New Orleans. Down the McAdoo low post. He takes the baseline on Moore. It's good and a foul on Otto Moore. A possible three-point play coming up. Well, that's a strong move by Bob McAdoo going baseline that time. He had almost no room at all. Let's watch it again. As McAdoo gets the ball, he posts down low now. Comes baseline using his quickness here. Coming underneath and gets the layup and he'll shoot one. And he completes that for a three-point play. Right, he makes the foul, and so McAdoo with five points, and the Jazz in the penalty now, so he would have had an extra try had he not made it. It's 17-14, New Orleans on top. 350 left in quarter number one. Pete Maravich. Good. Maravich in his seventh year from LSU. Boy, he is an offensive machine. 13 points in the quarter already. 13 of 19 for New Orleans. McAdoo. Seven for Big Bob. Jazz on top by just two, 19 to 17. That last play by Maravich. Tom McMillan came over to help Butch Beard out, and they were both all over him, and he still got that shot in. A drive by Williams, pitch it off. Here's a jumper at the baseline. Good by Otto Moore. He didn't score very much. Otto averaging just 6.2 a ball game, and he was picked up by the Jazz as a free agent. McAdoo, a jump shot from the right lane is good. And McAdoo now has nine points to lead the Knicks. You might see McAdoo switching off a lot on defense because Otto is not a real offensive threat, but if you give him a short jump shot, he'll make it. But McAdoo can gamble against him and help his teammates out. E.C. Coleman to the middle, and Maravich, he's double teamed and can't shoot. Gets it back to E.C. He's not really a scorer. E.C. is basically a defensive forward, so the pistol lets it fly, and he hits. Shot is too long for Maravich. Well, it's going to be an, an offensive show here. It's shaping up now. Pistol feet and Bob McAdoo. Well, he'd have 60 if he kept on going the way he is right now. He's got 15, and we still have two and a half to go in the quarter. Tom McMillan gets another one. Tommy has his fourth field goal of the opening quarter. It's 23-21 New Orleans. And the Knicks are keeping the pressure on. Maravich behind the screen. Williams always shoots well against the Knicks, it seems. Here's the first shot of the game for E.C. Coleman, and he comes back from a two-game layoff to hit it. E.C. from Houston Baptist. Now, E.C. is a smart basketball player. He's not a great shooter, but he takes good shots. He works hard for his shots and plays great defense. Now we've got two minutes left in the opening quarter. McAdoo in the lane gets the shot away. It is banked up and in by Big Bob, and he's got 11. It's turning into an offensive show by both ball clubs right now. Nobody's missing. 
Earlier this year, we had a shootout between Maravich and Monroe in a game at the Garden. First time the Jazz was in. Oh, there's a foul on Deer. Pistol Pete really played, much like a fiddle that time. He was moving very well to get his shot off that time. Wouldn't be surprised to see the Jazz make an adjustment and switch E.C. Coleman over to Bob McAdoo because right now, Otto Moore is not containing Bob McAdoo at all. Pete Maravich headed for the foul line as we come back to play. Pistol was fouled by Butch Beard. We've got 1.43 left in the quarter. Would you believe his 16th point of this period? Well, that's really something. 17 of 27 for Pistol Pete. It's 27-23, New Orleans. And he's shooting them from all over the floor. Beard passing down to Jim McMillan. A well-run play to Monroe, but he is in the lane for three seconds. Pretty good defense by Aaron James in the lane. James kept Monroe out of shooting position. That's New York's sixth turnover. Earl is upset. He's very close to a technical foul. Maravich is getting a rest now, and you see Mo Howard, number 14, in the game for the first time. Mo was a draft choice of the Cavaliers this year out of Maryland. Picked up here recently as a free agent. And Mo Howard hits the basket. 29-23, New Orleans. Monroe at the baseline. Off the back iron, no good. E.C. Coleman for a board. 106 left in quarter number one. They're spelling Maravich here at the quarter mark, so he can get a little extra rest. McElroy's drive was short, blocked by the Knicks, and boy, McElroy thought there was a foul, but none is called. And so did Pete Maravich and Elgin Bale here off the bench yelling at the official. So nobody's happy here tonight, except that New Orleans leaves it by six points. Less than a minute remaining in the quarter. McElroy studies a move, pitches off to Howard. His second shot of the game is overshot. Tom McClellan gains possession for the Knicks. Here's Butch Beard. Butch on a drive down to the baseline, looks back to Tommy Mack. He's open. No good. E.C. Coleman has a rebound. There have been very few offensive rebounds in the opening quarter by the Knicks. That's basically because both the big men, McMillan and McAdoo, are outside shooting jump shots, and there's nobody inside for that offensive rebound. Jazz working the ball. Mo Howard around the center, Otto Moore. McElroy gets it back to Otto. He had a jump shot earlier tonight. The crowd wants him to shoot. Here's one by Nate Williams, an air ball, and a foul on Monroe. He fouled Mo Howard trying to get a layup. Second foul on the pearl. Well, the smallest man on the floor picking up that uh, ball for the New Orleans Jazz. Mo Howard and Monroe fouled him as he went back up for a shot. Here's Howard, six for eight at the foul line this year. <laughs> Howard was waived by Cleveland on the 10th of December and picked up last week by New Orleans. Here's the Jazz widest edge of the game, uh, an eight-point margin, 31 to 23. Ten seconds left in the quarter. It is good, and a foul on McElroy, and nothing like the old three-point play. And now Bill Jackson gets up off the bench to check in for the next tonight. And no doubt you'll see New York going to a press now. Only seven seconds to go in this first quarter. The Knicks will probably go to that full court press after Ipero makes the free throw. He'll have two for one. Jackson replaced Tom McMillan. Earl, a good free throw shooter, and that's it. Now, let's see. There's Jackson pressuring the inbound by Coleman. He gets it into Nate Williams. Nate comes up front to Howard. Howard drives off. Uh, two super plays on defense by Bob McAdoo. The first play is going to be a block here. Otto Moore gets set to go up, and McAdoo really makes a fine play. No foul. Ball is picked up by Nate Williams. He goes up, and McAdoo, with two personal fouls in the first quarter, makes another fine defensive play. Two fine plays back-to-back -back by Bob McAdoo. Maravich is back in the game now, and Tiki Burton and Bill Bradley are playing for the mix as is Lonnie Shelton. Lonnie blocked that one nicely. Another try, and Williams scores. Nate Williams... Well, the Jazz effective on their offensive board. They've been able to get that second shot, but New York so far has not been able to do that. Dickie Burton made a couple of long shots at Atlanta last night. Butch Beard passing cross court to Lonnie Shelton. Lonnie looking a little 
confused on offense these days. Lonnie is playing mostly as a defensive ball player. Two seconds on the timer. McAdoo's shot hit the rim. Rebounded by Williams. It's a three-on-two break. On the score. Burger could not get it back well on defense that time. McAdoo had to force that shot up because the 24-second clock was going out. And this was slow getting back on defense. Jazz up by nine for the first time, 35 to 26. Shelton matched against Otto Moore. He often stole the ball, but Lonnie traveled. Lonnie's rhythm was interrupted by the near steal by Otto Moore. Otto reached in and knocked that ball out of Lonnie's hand. Seventh turnover for the Knicks, five for New Orleans. Nate Williams, he always seems to shoot well against the Knicks. And Nate loves to shoot the basketball. When he gets his shot, he'll put it up. Talk about loving to shoot. Air ball by Maravich. He was really off range that time. And they're ruling that Bradley touched that ball last, and they're giving it to New Orleans. Williams calling the play at the baseline for the Jazz. If not, but the Jazz and the Knicks are both battling the Boston Celtics for what appears to be the final playoff spot in the East. The Celtics have a game at Seattle tonight. Butch Beard, no good, no foul. Rebound, Otto Moore. And Richard, that's the same thing that Pete Maravich did. He got the call. Why couldn't Butch get it? Because Pete Maravich is a star. <laughs> Here's Maravich twisting by Lonnie Shelton, and the shot no good. Rebound, Beer. Here comes Butch. Beat it off to Lonnie Shelton, and he lays it. Lonnie Shelton. Nice move by Lonnie. Well, he cooled off a little bit now. Maravich even missed three shots in a row after he's really shooting well in that first quarter. It's 35-28. The pistol had that one pop out. A head fake and a foul. Lonnie Shelton draws his first personal of the night. The Knicks just not able to get that offense, that defensive rebound. The shot was missed by Maravich, and he came right in between McAdoo and Lonnie Shelton to get the offensive rebound. Then he drew the foul. Paul Frazier is coming back to work for the Knicks. He'll replace Butch Beard. And Maravich to the foul line. That was his 18th point. Nobody in this ball game has missed a free throw yet. Both sides perfect at the foul line. Now it's 37-28 New Orleans. Bradley on a floor pass to McAdoo. Goes down to the baseline, shoots over top E.C. Coleman, but it's no good. And Maravich takes the rebound away from Lonnie Sheldon up to Coleman. Score it! And the Jazz jump up by 11, 39-28. to Red Olsen, now he calls a timeout. The Knicks for the backcourt now of Burden and Frazier, Bob McAdoo at center, Bradley and Shelton at forward. Here's Mo Howard guarding Tiki Burden. Tiki works inside, and the ball is slapped away, goes out over the sidelines, and Tiki has lost it. And again, Red Oldsman venting his emotions on referee Don Murphy, who says, sit down, Red. That time, up until now, Murph hadn't said anything, but this time he pointed at Red and said, a seat. Maravich. Boy, he's got all kinds of moves. What move doesn't this guy have, Kel? Well, he can do it all. I don't know how you stop a guy like that. You have to have help, and uh, right now, the Knicks aren't able to do anything with him. 21 points for the pistol right now on a 41-28 lead. A whistle before the shot by Tiki Burton. Three seconds, that basket does not count. McAdoo wasn't in the lane that time. He couldn't pick the ball up. And when the ball was rolled loose and Tiki picked it up, McAdoo was still in the lane. McAdoo is taken out of the game, getting a rest now, and he has been replaced by Phil Jackson. Well, the turnovers are mounting, and the Knicks have committed nine to five for the Jazz. By the way, turnovers really hurt the Knicks last night. If you wanted to make a quickie analysis of last night's game, as William shoots the score, you'd point to the fact that the Knicks turned it over 23 times, leading to 22 Atlanta points. The Hawks turned it over 17 times, but only 10 Nick points. So a difference in points of 22-10. And here's a foul on E.C. Coleman. E.C. trailing through Jackson along the lane. He was not in good defensive position that time. That's why he picked that foul up. Next play it back in. Frazier makes the bounce pass to Tiki Burden. The ball was knocked away by Howard. Here comes Mo. Score it. And look at the happy Mo Howard. And an inbound steal for the Jazz. Everything is going wrong. Pistol fires. Going right 
back to the Knicks now. They are losing the ball on the offensive end, and they can't seem to contain the Jazz from the defensive end. Sticky Bird with the ball now. Mo Howard reaches in and knocks the ball away, and he beats Frazier up the floor for a layup. And then the inbound pass was thrown, and Mr. Pete made another one. Here's Mo Howard firing no good. We had a foul on Lonnie Shelton at the other end, and the Knicks have lost the ball again. Twelve turnovers to five for New Orleans, and they picked them up in a hurry here. Williams speeding off the drive. Here's Maravich. They got it to the guy they want. Pistol in and out of the lane. Here's a good. A 21-point lead, 49 to 28. Shelton gets a basket, and that's only the second basket for the Knicks in the quarter as you watch Dean Meminger get ready to come into the game. Oh, well, Knicks having two big problems right now. One is turnovers on the offense, and the second is not able to contain the Jazz at all when they're on defense. Well, that basket counted, and Walt Frazier draws the foul. Lonnie Shelton has scored all points for the Knicks in the quarter as you watch Dean Meminger come to work. By the way, Dean did something very unusual in last night's game. He picked up three assists in two minutes. <laughs> now, that's pretty good. Well, Dean's role really is to play defense and try to get the ball to the shooters. He's not a particularly good outside shooter, but he's a smart ball player, a good defensive ball player, and he looks for the open man. Otto Moore is not a good free throw shooter, 67%. Rebound, Phil Jackson, nearly stolen by Howard. 51 to 30. Next, we'll get it back, but Howard playing some defense. Well, he's sitting here hustling back, coming in behind Earl Monroe and knocking the ball away. New Orleans has outscored the next 20 to 4 in the quarter. A loose ball foul is called on Maravich. Fans are getting excited. That's the first break the Knicks have had in some time. Pistol called on his third personal foul. That could be a factor. It's pretty early to have three. 703 left in the second quarter. Bill Jackson at the baseline. Off the back iron. will play it from the sideline. The ball will be triggered by Monroe. In the McAdoo. Pearl gets it back to Jackson. A jumper by Phil. No good. Rebound. Williams fire it out to Maravich. He threw it too long and Monroe gets back and intercepts it. First turnover of the quarter against the Jazz. The Knicks have turned it over six times in the period. And New Orleans picks it right off again. The Knicks just not moving that ball well on the offensive end. The Jazz playing real good defense, but of course the Knicks are not sure off on offense at all. Well, last night, the Knicks had their lowest quarter of the year, a dozen points. Right now in this quarter, halfway through it, they've scored just four. 6.20 left in the quarter. Looks like somebody ought to put a handle on that ball right now. McAdoo shoots. Good. And inside, contact between Phil Jackson and uh, Otto Moore, and they both went down to the floor. 15 points for McAdoo. Now the Knicks have given Dean Memmage the task of trying to contain Pete Maravich. Nobody else has been able to do anything with him so far. Well, what do you say? 27 points for Maravich, and we're five minutes, almost six minutes from halftime. He's an incredible performer. Earl twists into the lane, but he traveled. It doesn't count. Pistol can shoot, but he wants to get his shot. So if you watch him using a screen here, working against Dean Memeter, now he comes off the screen by Nate Williams and Otto Moore. Two guys boxing out right there, and here Pistol goes up for a shot. Number 53, Rich Kelly, has come into play center. There's the pass into Kelly. He is a second-year man from Stanford. Kelly was ejected in New York on Tuesday night. That basket does not count. Offensive foul is the call. ejected for arguing Tuesday night. Elgin Baylor showing a little displeasure, but he's got to be careful here because his club leads it by 21. He can't be too unhappy. Another steal. Oh, the turnovers are killing the Knicks. Kelly. And a 23-point lead. 55 to 32. They've scored.
four, just six in the quarter. Bill Bradley with the ball passing across to Monroe. The pearl on a drive. Maravich has him blocked off to Jim McClellan for a jumper. It's no good and a rebound Griffith. Here's a halftime NBA score. Golden State 52 and Buffalo 50. The Warriors have lost three in a row and the Braves have won four straight. Joe Mullaney doing a fine job in Buffalo. Maravich with a doing it all now showing his hook shot on Dean Remington. 57 to 32. Bill Bradley fires one up that will not go in. And Nick's not getting anything inside offensively. Everything is coming from the outside and they're not hitting very well and they're not getting those offensive rebounds. Nick's have been outscored in the quarter 26 to 6. Nate Williams on a drive. It is up and good. To six margin for the Jazz here in the quarter, and they lead it 59 to 32. No good. Rebound Coleman. No second tries for the Knicks right now. We've got three and a half minutes left in this quarter, and it's been a nightmare. Last night it was the third quarter. It was so bad. Bo Howard puts one in. Nobody is missing at that end of the floor. 61 to 32. They have almost doubled the Knicks' output. This is an incredible offensive show of the New Orleans Jazz. They can do no wrong. You saw Butch Beard getting ready to come in. And an offensive foul. And, and I tell you, this is really unusual to see just everything go wrong. Here is Butch Beard coming in. Well, you see Coleman's doing a good job defensively against Bob McAdoo. McAdoo was trying to get free for a shot, and he pushed E.C. away. This is not the largest deficit the Knicks have faced this year. Back on January 11th in the third quarter at Portland, they were down by 34. It's approaching that as Maravich guns one up, and it's 63 to 32. A steal! And it's taken by Neminger. That time, the Jazz just rushed it up a little bit too much. Beard at the baseline, goes on the end line. He turned it over. Now, Pete Maravich has one less point than the Knicks as a team. <laughs> now, that's something. And Red Holzman has got to be a frustrated human being, and I don't blame him. What does a coach do at a time like this? About the only thing you can do is shuffle your players. Here's a jump ball. And hope you come up with a combination that they can play more effectively. Right now, the Knicks cannot do anything right on either end of the floor. Meminger against Tower. A battle of the Little Giants. Jazz keep it. No, it's stolen away by Beard. Up front to Jimmy McMillan. He drives. Off the glass. No good. Coleman rebounds. That was fine defense by Maravich. Williams on a move, and he traveled. Yes, he did. 2.17 left in the quarter. And the Knicks are calling a timeout. Well, what do you think, uh, Cal? New Orleans had 31 points at the end of the opening quarter. Now they've got 63. The Knicks had 26, and now they've got 32. Well, what do I think? The Jazz are playing a great basketball game, no doubt about it. They're doing everything right, and the Knicks are doing everything wrong right now. Uh, the Jazz are getting good shots inside. They're getting the second shot. They're running the ball because the Knicks are not shooting well. The Jazz are controlling their defensive boards, coming out very quickly. Smith D.C. Coleman's coming to the ball game against Bob McAdoo. He's pretty well contained. McAdoo, he was hot in the first quarter for New York, and no one can seem to hit from the outside of the Knicks right now. Most of their shots are all coming from the outside, and again, there's not that second chance because the Jazz are controlling their defensive board. The lowest quarter by any team in the NBA this year is 10. That is by six different teams. The fewest points in a half is 28 by the Nets at Washington on January 21st. The Knicks have already uh, surpassed that, but uh, the quarter mark is still up for grabs because because the Knicks have scored just six here in the quarter. And uh, they have been outscored in the period 32 to six. It is really one of the most unusual periods of NBA pro basketball that I've ever seen. And Red is really laying into the club, and I can't blame him. And maybe a little tongue lashing here is exactly what's called for. Don Murphy has taken Red's heat as well. <laughs> 
Maybe more so than the players. Murph working the game with Dick Bavetta tonight. We've got 2.17 left in the quarter, and of course the Knicks could easily get 15 points left yet in the last two minutes. You can get them in a hurry, so let's see what happens. Here's Bill Bradley with a jump shot. It is no good, and a rebound by Coleman. I don't think the Knicks have had an offensive rebound in the quarter. Maybe one. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes left in the quarter as Howard shoots and scores. And that makes it a 34 to 6 advantage in the quarter. It is 65 to 32 as the Jazz has doubled the Knicks' output in the game. McAdoo is short. Offensive rebound. There's one for Big Mac. Out to Jim McMillan. Down to the baseline and a layup for Bradley. The eighth point of the quarter for the Knicks. Bradley scoring for the first time in the game. Minute and a half left in the third quarter. New Orleans on top, 65 to 34. The rookie Paul Griffin looking for help. Five seconds on the timer. He'll do it himself. It is no good, and Bradley has the rebound. Here comes Tiki Bird. Tiki goes inside, puts it up. Good, and we've got a foul. Some other NBA scorers at the half. Detroit 49 to 42 over the Nets. At the end of a quarter, Denver leads Kansas City 36-31. At the end of a quarter, Chicago over Atlanta 26 to 16. Phil Jackson in for the Knicks. Tiki Burden hits the first free throw. Tiki hitting at 56% in his only free throw, I should say. And Jackson gets that ball. Court track worked for New York that time. They made the deal, and McAdoo had to jump at the top of the key. Knicks now with 11 points in the quarter. Make it to 12 points in the quarter. Tiki Burton comes back and scores again. And the Knicks putting a little dent in that margin right now. It is 65 to 41. 36 seconds remaining in the second quarter, but no matter how it finishes, it's going to be a dangerous one for the Knicks. Maravich was on the baseline. That drive nullified. That's one of the few things that Chrisler has done wrong this evening, going baseline and stepped on the out-of-bounds line. Maravich has scored 31 points in the game thus far. His career high, by the way, is 51. And if he would keep playing like this in the second half, of course, he would have a shot at that. Dickie Burden left up a high riser. No good. Bill Jackson offensive rebound. McAdoo, and we've got a whistle from Dick Pavetta. That uh, was a good call. Nate Williams pushing McAdoo away as McAdoo trying to control the ball. This kind of game has to be tough for the officials to work, too, because the Knicks are out there playing in frustration. It's a freewheeling ball game. The Jazz are pretty much having their own way, bringing the ball up the floor almost every time they get the opportunity, and they've been very effective, particularly the Pistols. 17 points for McAdoo, 65 to 43. Jazz breaks the pressure this time. Howard feeding off to Williams. He blows a layup. McAdoo rebounds. Seven seconds in the quarter. Five seconds. Tiki Burden to the basket. No good. And the rebound by Howard. And that will do it in the quarter. With the score, the Jazz 65 and the Knicks 43. I don't know what that scoreboard looks like to you, but what it says is Jazz 65 and the Knicks 43, and the Jazz shot 57% in the first half, and the Knicks shot 39%, and Gallo was a blessing for the Knicks that at least they made a run at the Jazz toward the end of that quarter, or it could have been total disaster. A tremendous first half by the Jazz, and again, Pete Maravich in particular, he had an outstanding offensive game, and the Jazz did a tremendous job on defense, but towards the end, the Knicks started to come back a little bit. They're going to have to really play tough ball to get back into this ball game. They're going to have to do a job defensively to put a lot of pressure on the ball and toward the end of the first half they started doing just that Nick went into a full court press Bill Jackson putting pressure on the ball Tiki Burton coming up now you're watching the right of your screen as Bush Beard cuts off the passing lane and that enables Bill Jackson to get that ball away from Mo Howard which leads to a basket here by Bob McAdoo at the top of the key. As he's wide open, Bob scored 17 points in the first half in New York. But that kind of defensive pressure is what the Knicks are going to need throughout this ball game. 
And they keep that pressure on right here. Maravich with the basketball up the floor. And Phil coming around, harassing him. Bush Beard helping out. He dribbles into a crowd. Jimmy Mack knocks the ball away. Eventually, he picks the basketball up. But that's the kind of pressure the Knicks will need to get back into this ball game. They're trailing by 22 points as Chucky Burton goes in for a layup here. Pistol Pete, what a first half he had. He shot 12 of 18. He also shot 7 for 7 in fouls, and he had 5 assists, which is the best figure for any player on either team as well. So, in addition to scoring 31 points, you might say that he was accountable for 41 so he had a, a, the Jazz points. A tremendous first half. He played a real fine all-around basketball game. The Knicks were not able to contain him at all. He pretty much did what he wanted to do out there, shooting that long jump shot. The Knicks did try to help out on defense, but he so quick he was able to get his shot off. And again, a fine, outstanding offensive performance by Pistol Pete Maravich. Bob McAdoo shooting 7 of 14 for the Knicks. He leads them in scoring with 17 points. And then we drop down to 8 for Tom McMillan. Tom shooting 4 out of 7. The rebounding leader for the Knicks is Bob McAdoo with 5. 2 on the offensive board, 3 on the defensive board. Team-wise, the Knicks were beaten on the boards rather decisively, 29-20 in the first half. Uh, the turnovers, which had really hurt the Knicks for a while, actually sort of evened up with that Knicks comeback at the end of the second quarter. And here at the half, the Knicks have turned it over 15 times and the Jazz a dozen times. At one stage in that quarter, New Orleans had outscored the Knicks by a 34 to 6 margin. In the quarter overall, it was 34 to 17 as the Knicks came back with a rush at the end. Elgin Baylor, one of the all-time great forwards in the NBA. In fact, maybe the all-time greatest forward. Coaching of the New Orleans Jazz now. And the Knicks going back with the same team that finished up the second quarter. Jim McMillan, Butch Beard, Chucky Burton, Bill Jackson, and Bob McAdoo. And here is the hugeness of this Superdome. And this basketball court almost seems like it's lost in it. They just kind of side it up to one side, put in those extra stands, and away we go. But this is a huge edifice here in New Orleans. This is not your average arena. And there's the warning for Phil Jackson for delay of game as he reached over and knocked the ball away from Jim McElroy. Well, you're allowed to play tight defense, but you're not supposed to touch the ball while it's in the opponent's hands. Here are the Knicks using a press, and apparently they're going to go with it and see if it can bring them back. 65-43 as we start the third quarter. New Orleans on top. Here's the pistol, and he has been hot. McElroy, stalwart, a little bit long, and McAdoo gets the rebound. And let's see if the Knicks can score first here in the third quarter. Sticky burden to McAdoo. Mac fates the pop shot, moves in tighter. It is good, and a foul on Otto Moore. Well, McAdoo making a good move. He had a jump shot, but he put the move that time on the big fellow, Otto Moore. Got him up in the air, and Mac leads in a little bit. You watch here now. Mac pulls up, gets the fake. Now he leans in a little bit, gets the contact. Then he goes up and gets a good roll, and he makes a three-point play out of it. All right, he adds the free throw, and so it's 65-46. Maravich <laughs> bailed it back as he came across midcourt in the air. Here's the shot by Pistol. He's good. Pete Maravich now with 33 points in the ball game. 67-46 New Orleans. This is the final meeting of the year between these two teams. If the Knicks lose the game, they will lose the series, and it'll be their first series loss of the year. The Knicks have completed five series so far, and they have either won them or broken even. Here is a basket by Stallworth. 69 to 46. Tiki Burden feeds off the drive to Beard. Back off to Tiki. Baseline shot is short, and a whistle and a loose ball foul. That's going to be on Griffin as he was. Uh, he ran into Jim McMillan going up with the rebound. The Knicks have won their season series from Golden State and Los Angeles by three to one margins, and they finished two two against Cleveland, Houston, and the Nets. McAdoo shot is good. Second basket of the quarter by Bob. He's got 22 points. 69-48 New Orleans. Maravich almost tripped. Beats to Griffin. Maravich said something to Tiki Burton. Tiki is picked off here. Let's go ahead. I don't know how you stop him. <laughs> he is too much. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I'm running out of things to say about Maravich. McAdoo. McAdoo. McAdoo's not doing a bad job in New York. He's shooting that ball very well, too. He has outscored the pistol in the quarter, 7-4. to four. Which 
interfered on a foul. I tell you why Butch is upset. He got nothing but ball, but he knocked the ball into Maravich's head. <laughs> it was a good defensive play by Butch. He came over the top and hit the ball. The ball bounced off a pistol's head, and they called a foul on Butch. That's the old head foul, Cal. <laughs> Brent Holzman really frustrated. Pistol with a 37-point output. He is really something. He set his uh, career high as Beard puts one up short. Maravich set his career high earlier this year. It's a 51-point mark. McElroy blocked off the board, and here come the Knicks. A three-on-two New York break. Punched away by Griffith. Oh, this is running a good fast break that time. Uh, Butch Beard tried to drop that ball off to Jim McMillan, who was running right beside him, and he had a better chance, I think, trying to get that ball to Tiki Burton. Jim McMillan inbounds to Tiki Burton. Tiki almost out of room at the sideline. Here's a jumper by Tiki, just a little bit long, and a rebound by Griffith. He throws it away. Beard to the middle. McAdoo. Good. And McAdoo has scored 26 points, nine in the quarter. He's been very hot here in this third quarter. The only man really shooting well for the Knicks. 73-52. New Orleans on top. McElroy <laughs> goes on a drive and gets himself a basket. McElroy makes it 75-52. New Orleans. The Knicks once trailed in this game by 33, their second biggest deficit of the year. McAdoo misses. Jackson picks up the loose ball to save it for the Knicks. Jim McMillan goes on a drive on Stallworth, stops and shoots and scores. Jim McMillan with his first score of the night. Well, the story of this ball game is Pistol Feed Maravich. He is really doing it all. The Knicks trying to really give Bush Beard some help now defensively against such a play. Nothing seems to work. 39 points for Maravich, and that matches his high against the Knicks. That matches the high for any single player in the NBA against New York this year. Beard misses, offensive rebound, Jackson. Back to Bush. McAdoo and a whistle, three seconds on the Knicks. Now, Frazier, Meminger, and Shelton, a 3 of 3 coming in for the Knicks. Hey, that's redundant, a 3 of 3 What else would it be? <laughs> oh, the Knicks this time had two or three good opportunities for shots, and they uh, passed a little bit too much until one man was caught in the three-second area, and that refs did not count is keeping McAdoo and Jackson in the game. Otherwise, the three changes. Here's the pistol. The next point for him will be a high for the year against the Knicks. No good for Stallworth. Rebound Shelton stolen by Stallworth and a whistle. Uh, Nick finally got a break. That was a foul as uh, Lottie had the rebound. The ball was knocked away, but Stallworth got him on the arm while he had the ball. It'll be a backcourt foul and Lottie will shoot two. Shelton has scored two field goals in the game. At the line, Lonnie is a 73 percenter. I know these are very... Last night, the Knicks did not shoot good free throws as a team. They were 67 percent. Tonight in the ball game, they have not missed. They are nine for nine as a team. Well, Lonnie knocks two off the lead, and it's 77-56 New Orleans, and here's pressure again for the Knicks with 8.20 left in the third quarter. Knicks back home to play the Indiana Pacers tomorrow night. Pistol almost tripped again. Here's his jumper. No good this time. McAdoo rebound. He beat the press all by himself that time. Didn't he? Didn't need the other four guys. Here's a McAdoo shot. A little bit off target. Lonnie Shelton has the offensive rebound. Knicks have had a number of offensive rebounds this quarter. In and out for McAdoo. Lonnie Shelton, a turnaround. Good. Well, one thing to the Knicks credit, they're trailing here by 20, 19 points, but they are still playing hard basketball. They're not giving up. Tom McMillan will be back in the game shortly for the Knicks. James McElroy matched up against Dean Meminger. Here's Maravich with Frazier. Everybody's had a chance at beat tonight. He's working for this one. He takes it. No good. The Knicks were screaming three seconds. Lonnie Shelton drops the ball. Good pass by Dean Memmingham. I didn't see that ball coming in, and he lost it going out of bounds. 
Lineup change, number 52, Tom McMillan comes in, and he replaces Phil Jackson. I tell you, the special thing is the raw average, Chris will have to cool off pretty soon because he has not missed too many shots this season. I think he defies that law and a few others sometimes. Otto Moore gets fed in the post, back to the pistol, goes on a drive right to the basket. It is good, and he's fouled, and he has hit for the highest number of points of any player against the Knicks this year. He's got 41. And he made another great offensive move, that time going to his left, going around Tom McMillan, and Tom pushing him as he goes up for a shot. at the foul line adds the point now it is 80 to 58 new orleans and the pistol with 42 he is 10 for 10 at the foul line he is now nine points away from his career high ec coleman gets called on the foul for new orleans and new orleans is taking this time out 653 left in the third quarter Leminger, Frazier on the Knicks back line. Here's McAdoo up front with Tom McMillan, Lonnie Shelton. And the Knicks have lost the ball. The Knicks trying to get that ball inside to Bob McAdoo. He was being fronted by E.C. Coleman. And the ball was thrown out of bounds. That was the next 21st turnover, 14 for New Orleans. Halfway through quarter number three. The Knicks have been busy lately. Tonight is the Knicks' seventh of eight games in 11 days. Murphy sounds a whistle underneath, and he's got a foul on Lonnie Shelton. Yeah, you saw a pistol Pete Mob his versatility. He was double that time, and he got a good pass inside to Otto Moore. Lonnie Shelton helping out, came over and knocked the shot away, but he fouled Otto in this shot attempt. Big Otto, 67 percenter at the foul line. Otto, a veteran of Pan America, first round draft choice of the Detroit Pistons in 68. 82-58, a ball is for New Orleans. Leminger to Shelton. Lonnie at the baseline, backs off, does not shoot, and a whistle. Three-second call on Lonnie, his heel was in the lane. Lonnie indecisive that time. He had the ball inside, good defense by the Jazz, and he was in the lane. All right, here's Maravich. What a ball game he's playing. 42 points for the pistol right now. Frazier knocks the ball free. Five trying to dog pistol feet. Off it comes to McElroy. A jump shot for him. No good. McAdoo rebounding. Now we've reached the halfway point of the quarter, and it's 82-58 New Orleans. The Pearl throws up an off-balance shot. No good. Shelton fighting for the rebound. It comes to Stallworth. And he decides not to force the fast break and to go ahead and wait. Maravich still working for shots, and he gets the shot. Oh, what an incredible shot. A foul will be called on McAdoo, and he almost got the field goal. He can do no wrong tonight. Earl was on him. He put a good move on Monroe to get him off balance. McAdoo came over to help out. You're watching the replay now. If he puts the fake on Earl, Earl goes past. McAdoo comes to help out. He gets them both up in the air, and he gets the contact there as he goes up for a shot. Pistol has missed his first free throw. He is now 11 of 12 at the line. And you'd have to say, unless he sits down for a large stretch of this ball game, if he keeps playing, he's going to set a new career high tonight because he's within eight points of it right now. Ten seconds on the timer. Lonnie Shelton shoots no good. Rebound E.C. Coleman. It's 83-58 New Orleans with five and a half left in the third quarter. Pistol fires. He's short. He's running out of energy, I think. He might be a little tired now. Wouldn't be surprised. Frazier lets one loose. Good by Clyde. Frazier with four points. That's his first field goal of the ball game. It is 83-60, the Jazz. The Knicks have knocked ten points off what was the highest New Orleans lead. Here's Pistol from the baseline. This one is no good. He's missed about three straight shots now. Frazier. No good. Rebound Otto Moore. 4.45 remaining in the quarter. The Knicks will be facing a stretch of three straight games at home, which they will enjoy. Maravich misses again. And a loose ball foul on Maravich. The pistol draws his fourth personal foul. Well, the big story here is the pistol. Apparently, he's kind of cooled off now. He's missed several shots from the outside. But he's had a fantastic offensive night so far. New Orleans in the penalty with 4.37 left in the quarter. 
And Nate Williams, number 22, has come in for the Jazz. And Phil Jackson is going to come in for the next, but he's coming in for Shelton, so he will wait. Or is he? He's going to wait until the first free throw is attempted at any rate. And now he's coming into the game for Tom McMillan. 37 left in the third quarter. Been a tough night for the Knicks. I know Joshua was in New York going to a full court press with Phil Jackson in the ball game. They were pretty successful in the first, first half with this. 10 points for Shelton. Here is Maravich dribbling through that press. He's going to go in and drive, shoot on the right. It's good, and he was fouled. And Pistol ran right over top. A cameraman perched the court side. He, I, he looks like he wants that new career high tonight. Well, it's awfully tough to press a man with his dribbling ability. You'll watch him here beating Lonnie Shelton. Monroe coming over, and he just goes right around Earl here. Earl bumps him as he goes up for a shot, and he makes a three-point play out of it. That's right. He hits the foul. That's his 46th point. Four and a half left in the quarter. 86-62, to 62, New Orleans on top. We're in the third quarter at the Superdome in New Orleans. Frazier double team as the Jazz put a pressure on. Lonnie Shelton in the lane, gets it back out. McAdoo drives and scores. Big Bob with a big scoring night. He's got 28. Well, he's been New York's offense this evening. He's been the only one that's been effective on offense. But the Knicks trail it by 22, and they trailed it by 22 when the quarter started, so they haven't made any progress within the period with four minutes to go. Nate Williams drives, no good. Shelton tips it into the air and takes it down. Up ready.